To more on what happened in Minnesota, we heard about it briefly there a second ago. An off-duty police officer is the one who sprang into action, shooting and killing that man suspected of stabbing nine people at that shopping mall in St. Cloud. ISIS says the suspect was, quote, a soldier of the Islamic State. But mall shoppers are thankful the off-duty cop was armed and ready. Let's welcome now from Newsmax New York, the president of the Crime Prevention Research Center, who is also the author of the book, The War on Guns, Arming Yourself Against Gun Control Lies, Dr. John Lott, Jr. So John, as we welcome you into America Talks Live, let's begin by listening to this account from St. Cloud's mayor describing the action of the off-duty police officer, Jason Falkner. He clearly uh, prevented additional injuries and potentially loss of life. His heroic actions uh, are exemplary, uh, having witnessed what he did as the suspect was lunging at him with the knife. Uh, not only did he fire, the suspect went down, he came back up on three different occasions. Now, John, this isn't just a case of Jason Faulkner being in the right place at the right time. He's a competitive shooter and NRA certified firearms instructor, and he happens to own a tactical training facility, and he was carrying a weapon legally within his Second Amendment right to do so. Now, the question becomes, Jason Faulkner was there. But across right. America, there may not be people there. So do we need to take a much more serious look at everyday Americans staying armed and prepared for something of this nature? Right. Look at the Crime Prevention Research Center website at crimeresearch.org. We have a list of dozens of cases within just recent years where mass public shootings have been stopped by citizens with concealed carry permits. You know, these cases rarely get national news attention. In fact, all the dozens of ones that we have in our list only got local news attention, but they happen all the time. You know, fortunately, this off-duty officer was available. I just give you a contrast. You look at France, where they had the concert shooting last November. There were actually eight off-duty police officers who were attending the concert. But because of French laws, off-duty police officers aren't allowed to be able to go and carry their handguns with them. And so even though you had eight off-duty police officers there at the attack, none of them were able to use guns to stop it. One can only imagine how much different that attack, you know, which left about 130 people dead, uh, would have turned out if France had had, would at least trust off-duty police officers. But, All I got to you know, say about that cases. is thank God for the Second Amendment in this country. John, let's go to the callers right. who are checking in now at one eight seven seven newsmax one eight seven seven six three nine seven six two nine. First up in this segment from Columbia, Maryland, it's Aileen. Aileen, welcome to America Talks Live. Thank you very much. You bet. I was responding to one of your panels before about uh, having people monitor in the mosques. And the problem with that is we don't have enough linguists. We need to have people who can speak the language and sound like a native. And yet a lot of people think uh, knowing other languages is elitist. So um, the government has been having a lot of trouble finding people who are actually native sounding speakers. I can appreciate the point you are making in terms of uh, having effective intelligence going into the respective mosques, and we want to thank you for that valuable comment. Let me uh, take into account what Aileen had to say, John, and talk about, as, as she mentioned, um, the situation where local intelligence may have difficulty speaking uh, fluent Arabic or uh, whomever may be in those mosques, uh, those in the mosques certainly are embracing the notion of getting their hands on weapons and using them to their advantage, at least as we have seen a trail of evidence uh, in times past. Uh, your take on, um, on uh, the man, the suspect caught today and uh, taken down by cops in Linden, New Jersey. Uh, we understand he, he and his family had already sued uh, law enforcement there in New Jersey as if they were somehow singled out as victims of discrimination. Right. Look, I mean, it's great to be able to have intelligence to stop people before they go and do these attacks. 
The question is, though, as we've seen time after time, you really can't depend upon that. You know, there's whether, uh, you know, it's simply impossible to go and find all these people beforehand. And the question is, what's your backup plan? And unfortunately, so many gun control advocates don't address that. They think if they just go and ban guns or do something else, it's going to stop these terrorists from getting guns. But you look at Europe. Europe has had the same rate of mass public shootings as the United States during the Obama administration, and casualties for mass public shootings in Europe has actually been 50% higher than mm. the casualty rate here in the United States. And yet they have all the different types of gun control laws that you could possibly want, plus more. Yeah, it and, goes back you know, to, the, to the wisdom of the bumper sticker. When guns are outlawed, only outlaws will have guns. Let's go back to the phones at one right. 877 from Long Island, New York. We welcome Corey. Corey, I understand you're a first responder? Yes, I am. I'm a first responder. I was there immediately. Um, I worked with uh, Local 79. I called my business manager. When are we going down? When are we going down? This is the kind of work we do, the demo, the removal. And everything, I worked with a lot of people from the uh, fire department, Port Authority, beautiful people. Um, what I would like to say is my father had passed away a couple of years ago, oh, and he also stated this. He's a World War II veteran. He said, this country, if it is to get attacked, it will be attacked from the inside. He was absolutely right, 100% right. And I could rewind the tape a little bit. People don't remember of these uh, renter trucks, the riders, they were called, whatever, was underneath the World Trade Center. Okay, that was detonated, okay? Right, that so, was during the first bombing. Yeah, that, yeah. that has gone on, and that has been, yeah. boy, that really speaks volumes about your dad being able to point out what was going on. And, Corey, we appreciate all your efforts as a first responder there in the New York City area. So, John, you heard it. And you heard the uh, really the prophecy of Corey's dad coming true. We would be attacked from the inside. As there are others who exploit right. our freedoms, it is now time for Americans, everyday Americans, to embrace the Second Amendment. Your final word uh, in this minute that remains. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate his efforts. Look, I mean, he's exactly right. The problem that you face with terrorist attacks is that there's so many possible targets that are there. These killers have st huge strategic advantages in determining the time and place for the attack. Police have an almost impossible job stopping these attacks. You put a police officer to go and guard someplace, they're going to be the first person killed if the attack's going to occur. Look at the Charlie Hebdo attack in France last year. In the magazine, they had a police officer guarding it. He was the first one killed, and you see that in the United States. The benefit of concealed carry is that the killers don't know who they have to worry about. Is it somebody else that may be behind them or the side or the front? Uh, and police should be thanked you know, many times for the impossible job that they have there, but I think it's one of the reasons why the police themselves so strongly support people being able to carry concealed handguns. There's probably no other group in the population as police officers that support concealed carry as much as they do. Dr. John Lott, Jr., who has uh, chronicled the fight for Americans to keep their Second Amendment rights and offered empirical data to show us the effectiveness. Dr. John, we always appreciate your insights and analysis this afternoon from Newsmax New York. Now, you heard what our guest had to say. Some of you have weighed in. We invite more of your calls at 1-877-NEWSMAX, 1-877-639-7629. And despite his success on reality TV, Donald Trump was not exactly popular at last night's Emmy Awards presentation. We'll take a look and get your comments next.